Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson, and welcome to MS Project Tutorials. This is tutorial number nine, and in this tutorial, we're going to look at open ends. What are open ends, and why do we not want them in using scheduling software? Specifically, in this example, we're going to be using MS Project as you're trying to figure out how to learn and use MS Project. And one of the common mistakes that people make once they get used to you know, setting up their uh, activities and their predecessors and their successors and drawing out their project is they don't consider that everything that needs to be done in your project needs to be linked to something. All right, so that means it should have a successor, should have a predecessor, unless it's the first activity. The first activity doesn't need a predecessor. And the last activity, the last activity doesn't need a successor. If we have a lot of headings, uh, in a work breakdown structure, the headings shouldn't be linked either. Um, but other than that, every activity that needs to be completed needs to be linked to something. Because otherwise you're saying, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It could take as long a, as it needs to and it's not going to impact other stuff, as you'll see um, in a minute. Um, if you look at your screen, you're going to see this uh, sort of layout of an office project. And it's just a little quick example that I've got here. And if you're, you're following the Gantt chart over here, you see that it looks like everything has got connections all the way through. It's got a critical path. It looks okay, right? At least on the ones that you can see. Um, and that's really, you should review the Gantt chart. So that would be the first way to review the Gantt chart is to check. Does it look like everything is linked up? And if it does, well, okay, so that's one method. The problem with this method is it doesn't always tell you the whole story because visually it can look like everything is linked, uh, but sometimes not. And if you know a little bit about scheduling software and how the critical path is calculated, which I've discussed in some of my previous tutorials, uh, and you can always look at the previous tutorials. I'll leave a list at the bottom of links, or you can click subscribe and go to the playlist uh, and under the playlist where it says MS Project, uh, you can look at those videos as well to um, catch up on those if you're not too sure. But at any rate, um, the critical path is being shown. Now, if you know something about the critical path, critical path is the longest path through the project. Well, then my first question would be, why is this not red and it's blue? Because if, if it's the longest path, it seems like this is tied to this one. It looks like it's linked through, but actually like it's touching here, but it may not be linked as you'll see. If I shorten this by one day, 10 days, um, you'll see that there's no connection to the succeeding tasks, right? The successor task. And so it's kind of a little bit of an optical illusion. You'd easily think, well, this is all linked up. And depending how you've zoomed in or you've zoomed out of your screen, it may give you some comfort, but it's the wrong kind of comfort. And of course, the reason we want to make sure that they're all linked is, well, what if this actually ends up when we get into updating and recoveries and all that stuff, and we want to see what impact adjusting the duration has on the whole project, you will see that this doesn't really um, give you the whole story, right? Like this could take, you know, days and days and days and it's not turning critical and it's not moving the other activities that would be impacted by that. So this is not a good situation in this case. You would want to have it linked to the proper succeeding um, activity. And in this case, this proper seating ac succeeding activity is going to be um, your, let's see, inspections here. So really, I should have a, down here, I should have a comma, four and if i press enter watch watch my finish date my finish date currently is january 24th if i click here all right um it's still january 24th because that this it just lined up with this one um if i make this longer let's see uh now it's longer now it's critical by itself actually just go back here for a second see how this is when it's at 11 days well, now you've got two critical paths. Well, two critical paths means if either one of these takes longer, the project will take longer. 
Um, so in this case here, we've got now it's longer, right? So now it's pushing out the project when you adjust it. And if you do a schedule and you're missing uh, a lot of links, and I do a lot of consulting, and I had one client where I asked them for a schedule, and if they don't mind, I'll review it, uh, just because they were having some problems with their schedules. And I asked uh, the person that put the schedule, did you, does it have any open ends? And they said confidently, no, there's no open ends on this schedule. Um, and so then when I reviewed it, I found 21 open ends. Well, 21 open ends, I guarantee you, when you connect those things up, it's going to change your dates because some of them are on the critical path, not, maybe not for everyone, the ones that have float and they're not really driving the project yet, because when you update, when things happen, it does change how your project is going. In construction projects, it has a huge impact when you have things that are delaying things or taking longer. And when you actually have it connected to the wrong successors, that's another problem altogether. But not having it connected to anything, well, then I might ask you, well, what, what is, should it connect to? And I very often get a response, well, it doesn't really matter. It's not till months away. Well, at some point in your project, that may matter because it, you didn't connect it to something and you actually didn't do the work. And now all of a sudden when you do connect it, it pushes the whole project out and it's delaying the project. The purpose of scheduling software is so that you can see what impact something that's delayed is having on everything else. Also, from a documentation point of view, it's also important for those reasons. Um, so you want to make sure that there are no open ends in the project. So that's one way, but I'm not too overly confident of that one way. So the other way that I would look at it is I would insert a column because you can customize your screens in Microsoft Project. And it's called the successor column. Now there's like, I, I've never bothered to count them, but let's just say there's hundreds of columns. And you know what, we don't need to know how each individual, there, there'll be some columns you never use for whatever the reason. There's columns I've never used, um, but there are certain columns that are very fundamentally important. So the other one is successors. We've got predecessors and we've got successors. So if you know the first letter of the name of the column, you can always quickly bring it up. So I know it's successor, so I, I'm just gonna type S and then that brings up the successors column. So now the successors column is there. So you know what, I'm gonna delete it again and just show you how to do that again. Um, you right click, it always put the column, the new column to the left of whatever column you're in and insert columns very much like Excel except they're predefined columns and then press S for successors and then find where successors is with your mouse, click on it and there they are. And sure enough, I see that this is blank here, right? So I see that this is blank. And so that tells me that this should have something. I could ask myself, what should it, what should its successor be? Well, I said before it should be inspections. So all I would have to do is type number eight there. Now, in some projects, particularly like construction projects or massive infrastructure type projects and things like that, you may have thousands of tasks. Um, and if you have like a lot of tasks and you wanna quickly just find out which are the ones that haven't got successors or which are the ones that don't have pre predecessors, you can filter for that. So the way you filter is at the top of the column, you click on that down key. You see where it says filters? Um, just below here, you could go click on the select all and make, make that all the check marks go away and then click blank. So now it's just gonna bring up only the blank activities, only the blank ones. So I'm gonna click okay. And now all I see is three. I see the heading and I said that uh, headings, the summary tasks as Microsoft Project calls them, should not be linked to anything. So the summary tasks should not be linked to anything. Uh, so that's a good thing. They're not, this one's not. Uh, and if you, you would maybe have a multitude of summary tasks, if you have a proper work breakdown structure, you would have quite a few um, summary tasks in that work breakdown structure. In the case of construction, we might have like the project. If it was actually a, a big project, we might have pre-construction. Then we might have construction. Under construction, we might have 
uh, we might have our substructure, our superstructure, our building systems, um, etc. Right, broken down. So there might be a lot of headings and subheadings uh, in that. But in this case, I've only got one. If I had a lot of headings or, or um, subheadings and I didn't want to see them, I can actually just click on the Format tab and I can make them disappear. So see where it says Summary Tasks over here on the right? I just click that box and now you don't see the summary task. That's kind of cool, isn't it? So now I have Rough in Electrical Walls and Finish. Well, you know what? Finish is the last activity. It shouldn't have a summary task. So it's the last activity in the project. It shouldn't have a summary, uh, sorry, a successor. Um, so uh, finish should not have a successor as it's the last activity. Um, so that makes sense. So really now I've got it down to one activity. I know which one it is. So if I had, what I'm saying is if I had thousands of activities, all of a sudden I've narrowed it down. Maybe it might narrow it down because there's so many. I might have a bunch of open ends to 10 activities. Then I could start to work on those 10 activities and figure out what does it need to connect to. Now, if you filtered, you'll notice that it looks like a little funnel here. That's like a warning, a flag to you to say, hey, we put this filter there. Because I'm telling you right now, if you're a new user to Microsoft Project, you're going to filter something and you're going to forget it. Just like I did with the summary tasks. You're going to click them off and it's like, where did all my summary tasks go? I've lost it. If I want to bring it back though, I got to remember that I, I shut it off, right? So there, I can just turn it back on. And here, while I know that my problem is activity four, I could even write those down. If I had like 10 of them, I could write them down, the numbers. I know which ones and then I could start to work on them. If I want to bring it back, all the activities, I would bring that back by going select all and then I would uh, click OK and now I've got them all back. And I could do the same thing for predecessors, by the way. In this one, I think we're good with predecessors except for the first one. Select all, um, click the blank ones, just show me the blank ones. And then the first one, of course, it doesn't have a predecessor, like I said. So I know that my one laggard one that I've got to fix here is going to be um, that one that we mentioned, which is the rough in uh, electrical walls. So there you go. That's that one that I've got to fix. Now I could fix that here by typing number eight. And in this case, it's going to make them both critical because they're both the same time. Uh, if this was a longer time, right? So if this was a longer time, then it would push out the project, right? Like that. Um, but we'll leave it at that. Okay. I'm going to get rid of that number eight and just show you another way of also checking. And you know what? This takes like minutes to check and you've got a mammoth project and I've been involved in projects where it's been rushed even uh, when the project uh, was put together with an RFP schedule and there's been mistakes made and it's actually literally cost uh, some of the contractors weeks and months just by missing a few links uh, and that's not what you want. You want to have some really good information in your plan and this is so easy to check and it's going to be really a strong, strong best practice for you to follow. So the, the third and final way that I check using Microsoft Project is I slide my mouse to the left of the screen, Gantt chart. I click on that, right click. Okay, so all the way to the left, right click. There's other ways of doing this, of course. And I go to the network diagram. So I'm going to click network diagram. And network diagram is where we have what the project looks like, the network. It doesn't, it's not like the Gantt chart where it shows you um, linearly how long something takes. Um, so the length of these uh, joining bars means nothing, but what it does show you is the logic, the predecessors and successors between the activity. So you can get a good sense of what's going on. And this came out pretty good because it's kind of um, uh, showing, it's not totally clear, it's somewhat clear, all right? And I'm just gonna click over here. And all I did, maybe it went behind my head here on the screen, because I think I probably won't bother to make myself disappear at this point. But there's a, there at the bottom right corner, you can scale, just like you can scale the Gantt chart, you can scale up or down the network diagram. The minus is gonna make it smaller, and the plus will make it larger. So right here, you'll notice that you can see everything connected almost. You see how there's a space right there? 
Well, that means this isn't connected. So that's just like I was just showing you. That's that same activity, rough and electrical walls. It's not connected. So then you would ask yourself, what do I need to connect this to? Now, if it's way down months ahead, you're probably better to do what I would just showed you and put the number of whatever activity you want in the successor column, right? In this case, it might be just as easy because it's right here. I know I want to connect it to inspections. Um, I can just grab it and pull. You'll see the chain. You see the chain pull and then let go. And now all of a sudden it's connected there and now you see it's critical as well. So I've now fixed it in both screens. So it's been now um, fixed in both screens and uh, I'm good with that. So now I can see my critical path. I got two critical paths there and it's flowing in there. Also, just to let you know, for those Excel users out there, it's a, it's a little bit like my, in a little bit like Excel in some ways, some of the things, it's a Microsoft product, right? You could always hold the control key down and click on rough and electrical, hold the control key down, click on inspections. And if I wanted to break a link between them, I could click on break. And now it just broke the link between them, right? It broke the link between all of them here, right? Um, so that was in that case how um, that broke that. Click undo, all right? Um, so I've had that one click too. That's why it broke that link as well. So I'm just gonna click this again. I only wanted to break these two links. So, because I already had that one. Once you hold the control key down, you can pick whatever you want, right? Just like you can in Excel. Um, so I'm gonna click uh, the um, rough in electrical walls, inspections, and I'm gonna go break the link. And there you go, now it's gone. If I want it back, just grab it, pull it, let go, and now it's back. And when I do it here, it's doing it in all the other screens. So they all uh, communicate to each other. It's not like I have to worry, oh, now it's not the same as the other screen. I can slide to the left, go back to my Gantt chart, and now you should see um, the completed uh, activities. So that, in a very, very short way, is how to avoid open ends. Make sure that everything is connected in your projects. If you're telling me it doesn't need to connect to anything, then I'm gonna ask you, then does it even need to be here because you're telling me it doesn't really affect any other dates? Is this part of your project? Why do you even have it in here? Um, so uh, a lot of the communication in that from Project Management Institute uh, is include 100% of the project in the project schedule. Don't include things that aren't involved in the project schedule, right? <laughs> so anyways, that's the quick way uh, and what I wanted to cover in this short video. I'm Tom Stevenson, wishing you a wonderful day. Uh, if you like this video and you want to see more, just uh, click subscribe or see the list that's in the description below. Bye for now.